Hey guys, how are you? I'm Diana, otherwise known as Dianca Pores, and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to bring you along my journey on how I created this painting right here. It's not a tutorial, but I do share some awesome tips and tricks. But if you want to learn how to create resin art, I have three amazing courses. One is for beginners if you've never dabbled in it and want to learn. The other one is for more advanced artists who want to learn how I create paintings such as this one today. And the third one is if you want to create beautiful scenic ocean paintings. So check those out, they're in the link below. And I do want to start this video with kind of showing you the materials that I used. As most of you know, I also sell resin art supplies. So if you really want to get into this realm, I have all of the stuff for you. When creating resin art, you don't need a massive selection of colors to create a beautiful painting. I like to say, keep it simple, stupid, because truly, you just want one color to be the star of the show and let the rest just complement. So for this painting, my main color is teal and that is it. And one awesome tip and trick that I wanted to include in this video is that you can use one color and get some awesome different shade variations with it. So I can use a lot of this and get a super pigmented opaque color or I can use a very small amount and make it very transparent and that's what I did. I used this pigment and I altered the saturation of it and so it gave me two different shade variations. So the sky is the limit here. Basically this is all I used to create that painting. I used this teal shade this excellence white for a pure kind of like matte white it doesn't have any sparkle it doesn't have any pearlescent effect that's what i love about excellence white i used royal white for that pearlescent effect for areas that i did want it and then i added some floating pigments so for those that don't know my float to the top pigments are metallic shades that float to the top of the artwork when you add heat and so then you have this beautiful metallic effect and I will explain that a little bit later. And then I supplemented my anti-gold pigment with anti-gold glitter. They're the same shade so they match perfectly in artwork. I use them both in fine and chunky so there's a little bit of a size variation in there as well just to add some dimension. And then you can't forget the glitter glass. So this I sift over my glass points which I will explain a little bit later too but this brings so much sparkle to your glass areas and creates this beautiful druzy effect. It's incredible and not to be slept on. And then if I want, I can add some tiny cubic zirconia onto my quartz points. I like to drizzle it around there just to add some more sparkle. These insert angles give off a rainbow reflection, which is really neat. And that's basically it. That's all you need. In terms of pigments and art supplies, of course, you're going to need a board to pour on and some resin and some fire glass, but that is essentially your whole supply set. So check these out. I have them linked below and uh, check out my website in general. Browse around. I added like 27 new glitters on there and I just think you're going to love everything on there. Okay, let's get started. I want to explain the concept behind this design right here because it did change a little bit over time. 
Initially, my intention was to create eight separate paintings, similar in color, similar in design, but then once I put them next to each other, I thought it would be really cool to make the design flow into one another and still separate them, and it would almost be like a collectible item, and my collectors would have one piece of the whole. Except, as I started wrapping up this painting and seeing how everything came together, I had to rethink that decision because I absolutely fell in love with the way that each panel flowed into one another and they were entangled in design. It was just something that I couldn't separate. It was like separating your kids or siblings. It just felt morally wrong. So instead of creating eight single paintings, I decided that this would be one single painting with eight panels. The gold that you see me working with, the one that I poured right before Excellence White, is called Antique Gold, and it is part of my Float to the Top pigment collection. And basically what that means is that it has these micro particles that are activated by heat and you can activate them using a blowtorch or a heat gun. Right here you can see me using a blowtorch and going over the gold and it starts to activate that gold and lift to the top. And what it does is it makes the gold much more rich and much more luxurious and reflective. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking that same antique float to the top pigment powder and instead of mixing it with resin, this time I'm going to mix it with some gloss varnish to turn it into a paint. And then I'm going to take that mixture and paint the edges of my glass areas. This is just to clean up the edges, make it look nice, and this floating pigment, even though it's not mixed with resin, it also has to be activated by heat. So when you're done, you can either use a heat gun or a blowtorch to go over that area that you just painted to lift that gold, 
bring it to the top and make it look so luxurious and beautiful. I'm about to show you a before and after. Just watch how right here, as I add heat to that gold area, that gold starts to lift and look so luxurious. I'll do it again right here. <laughs> 